Now, thanks to Tumblr and TikTok, a lot of people, mainly teenage girls, are discovering the joys of musical theatre. Now, I will cover these apps at a later date. This video is a message to these fans, who are looking to find some new shows, but aren't sure where to jump next. I'm here for you. I've picked out a bunch of these shows and some other very popular musicals, and I will suggest a show that's similar in style, or plot, or got a similar score, or a mixture of these three. This is Musical Suggestions. A big Hamilton fan. Why not check out Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson? Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson was the Hamilton before Hamilton. This show centres around controversial historical figure Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, but in this show he is presented as a whiny punk rock icon, and it really works. The show has an extremely short 30 minute score, which is a contrast to the 2 hour 40 minute running time of the Hamilton cast album, but it's very cleverly written, filled with big rock ballads and has amazing direction from Alex Timbers of Beetlejuice fame. The show is perfect for a revival and could definitely connect to a modern audience if the musical style was updated slightly to reflect bands like Panic at the Disco. So uh, can we pull a Be More Chill and get this uh, high levels of popularity online, like right now please? Dear Evan Hansen always makes you weep. I think Spring Awakening would be great for you. While musically they are quite different, when you start to hold these two shows up next to each other, they have quite a lot of parallels. They are both stories about failed communication and the struggle that comes from it. Spring Awakening is set in Germany in the late 1800s and centres around a group of teenagers coming of age and struggling to understand their bodies due to a lack of guidance from their conservative parents. It has a fantastic rock score, young Jonathan Groff, and enough angst to fill any teen's satisfaction. Both deal with the darker side of growing up as a teenager, and even though they're both set in two different time periods, the comparisons are shocking. I would also like to mention the most recent revival of Spring Awakening, which was performed with a mixture of deaf and hearing actors, all performing in American Sign Language, which is one of the most hauntingly beautiful productions I've ever seen. It's an amazing show, make sure you check it out. Oh, you're a big fan of Six and a part of the Queendom. Why not obsess over Legally Blonde next? Six is so original and fresh that it's hard to find something that has its vibe. I think Legally Blonde is a nice next step, both being shows that subvert the expectations of women. Legally Blonde is a story of Elwood, a Malibu blonde who is dumped by her boyfriend. She then follows him to Harvard Law to try and win him back and prove that she's serious. But when she gets there, she learns how to stand up for herself and rises to the challenge she sets herself. Legally Blonde shares a songwriter with Heathers, so you already know this score is gonna slap. It is perfectly upbeat and cheesy in the best way. Waitress is your favourite? I think 9 to 5 might also be up your alley. Now, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this show. I think it has a bunch of problems, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't have a strong score. Just like Waitress, it has a cast of three strong women who seek to rid themselves of a toxic man in their lives. I also find it quite ironic that these shows literally played across the street from each other in the West End. Written by everyone's icon, Dolly Parton, the musical has a score that blends country and pop and musical theatre surprisingly well. It does have a few misses, but when it hits, it knocks you out. The Broadway cast recording has one of the best performances from Tony Award winner Stephanie J. Block, who kills it with Get Out and Stay Out. And, of course, it features a catchy version of the famous title song, 9 to 5. Maybe you've been introduced to theatre through Starkid. May I suggest checking out Something Rotten? I think this show is a nice next step into theatre, as its comedic style is quite similar to the over-the-top and silly nature of Starkid. Something Rotten is set in the 1500s, and it's about a playwright who is constantly overshadowed by rock star William Shakespeare. He then decides to go to a soothsayer to find out what to write next, and gets told about musical theatre. The show is hilarious and fun, with loads of big dance numbers, catchy songs, and a hell of a lot of silliness. It is a musical that really celebrates musical theatre. Into a little bit of The Lightning Thief. Mythic might be your next big thing. Like The Lightning Thief, which deals with teenage Greek demigods, Mythic is a small British musical based on the Hades and Persephone story, but this time it's been reimagined as they're all angsty teenagers trying to impress or rebel against their parents. Mythic is not only fun, but has a score that is filled to the brim with bops. My Own Place in the Pantheon is one of my all-time favourite I Want songs, and I love the comedy of songs like Ew. 
This show would fit in perfectly next to all the other popular TikTok shows. So make it happen. Give it a listen. Big Beetlejuice stan over here. Oh, you might like 35mm. It's not the most obvious suggestion, but I think Beetlejuice is out of the box enough that its fans would appreciate this show too. 35mm is a song cycle concept musical, with each song being based on different photographs by Matthew Murphy. It doesn't sound too interesting, but each song is so perfectly crafted and different that it makes for a really great listening experience. Songs like The Ballad of Sarah Berry or On Monday are perfect for the audience that Beetlejuice has, and if you listen carefully, you might be able to hear the familiar voice of our favourite demon on the cast recording. Can't stop listening to the Heather's cast recording? Why not change it up and take a listen to Carrie? Carrie and Heather share a dark twist to the high school drama. With an eerie soundtrack, Carrie explores the life of high schooler Carrie White, forgotten, bullied, lectured by her overbearing religious mother, and dealing with changes and powers she can't control. Both shows have been ruined by Riverdale. Thanks, Riverdale. But Carrie is a very good show. It was saved from being a flop with an off-Broadway revival in 2012, which low-key mirrors the Heathers being saved by the internet and their West End run. So, if you get a little bit of time during our lockdown, why not check it out? You enjoyed Spongebob's time on Broadway? Why not check out Tuck Everlasting? Tuck and Spongebob are both adapted from children's stories... That's the link, please just go with it. Tuck of the Last Thing is set at the turn of the 20th century in New Hampshire and focuses on a friendship between a little girl named Winnie and an immortal family. Now, to be fair, for a show that was made in 2014, it hasn't aged amazingly. It has an important element of the plot that I think is a little weird when you look at it from a modern perspective. But the show is good on the whole and explores the themes of mortality in a mature way for a family-friendly audience. It's just a shame it only lasted a few months in the Great White Way. Oh, you're a Be More Chill stan. Little Shop of Horrors is your obvious next step. Musically, the shows are extremely different, with Be More Chill being more poppy and Little Shop of Horrors being more doo-wop. But it's a classic and the plots are very, very similar. Seymour is a loser working for scraps in a flower shop on Skid Row, pining after his co-worker Audrey who is stuck in a toxic relationship. When Seymour finds a strange and unusual new plant, the business suddenly spikes and everything starts to rise for him. But when the plant demands blood, Seymour has to balance his conscience and his ambition. It's boppy, fun and a little dark. Seymour and Jeremy are basically the same character except I honestly say I like Seymour more. The film version is extremely good and accessible or alternatively I check out the latest off-Broadway revival cast album featuring Jonathan Groff of Hamilton fame. Maybe you got into theatre from the film The Greatest Showman. I think Newsies might be a good fit for you. Both of these shows are very upbeat and modern with a cheerful vibe to them. Newsies, based on a Disney film of the same name, is inspired by the real-life Newsboys strike of 1899 and follows a group of Newsies preparing to strike, while a young female reporter follows that inspiring story. It's so full of life and makes you tap your toes but also has some great ballads like Santa Fe. The full show with my boy Jeremy Jordan is available on Disney Plus or alternatively you can listen to the original cast recording on Spotify or YouTube. Enjoyed Chicago? Why not check out Bandstand? I was originally going to compare Chicago and Bonnie and Clyde, but I think Bandstand is the much better fit, especially musically. Bandstand is set in the years following World War II, where Donny Nowitzki comes back to a world where he doesn't quite fit in, and all his gigs are dried up. After hearing about a contest, he forms a band exclusively of veterans in the hopes of becoming a big star. The show has this wonderful, jazzy soundtrack, which is... A lot more swing than Chicago is, to be fair, but it's glorious nonetheless. It also manages to tackle the darker themes of a post-World War II era, especially in numbers like Welcome Home and its reprise, which is a spectacular performance from Laura Osnes. Laura, Laura Osnes? Laura, Laura, Laura Osnes. Uh, I'm butchering this, just the names on the screen. Laura, Laura Osnes. <laughs> Anyway, check it out, it's amazing. But that's all the suggestions I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. All the suggested musicals will be in the description down below.
why not check out my two previous videos? But that's it for me today. I'll hopefully see you next week. I've been Daniel. Goodbye.